I feel like women date wrong. And the reason I say we often date wrong is because men do something really smart that women don't often do. Men start at zero. When men date, when they meet you, they're at zero. Like you are just a person that they just met and then you can build on top of that. But men start at zero. Women, we often start at a (laughs) hundred. Okay. Yo, party people, it's Ashley of singlewomanchronicles.com, where being single is a beautiful choice rather than a miserable circumstance. And how are you lovely people doing? I hope you guys had a wonderful weekend, although it is very ghetto out here in these social media streets. I don't know what voodoo Cat Williams put on the <laughs> the world, but it's just, it's just a lot going on. Like, ah! It's just a lot going on out here, man. It's just a lot. Um, I'm just kidding. I know he didn't put any voodoo out. He just set the tone for the rest of the year. Kind of like the Simpsons. Y'all remember how the Simpsons have been predicting stuff for a long time? He's basically the Simpsons now. But it it was it, it was a lot going on. But my weekend was pretty eventful. Your girl conquered her Saturday. I booked a mimosa fest and immediately afterward I went to a juvenile bun B um and Yin Yang twins concert and your girl was tired but I made it through I did not fall asleep I did not stumble I made it through of course there was no driving because we don't do those kinds of things when we are under the influence so it was a good time it was a very good time um, yeah, <laughs> it was, it was a good time. So I went back and forth on what I wanted to talk about today and I, yeah, <laughs> I landed on this topic because lately, so I feel like every season in life of dating, I don't, I don't know why I'm being, I'm tired of being a guinea pig, Jesus. But I'm often learning as I'm dating. So I think in this season, not I think, I know in this season I'm learning pacing. Pacing has been the hardest thing to do in my life in dating because I struggle with anxious attachment style. For anyone who knows what that is, it's basically when you become attached to people quickly because of your childhood, maybe you had abandonment issues, you didn't have a present parent. For me, it was not having a father um, and also not having uh, the reassurance in the household where, you know, I didn't have the reassurance of, oh, you're beautiful. Oh, you can, you can do it. Oh, you're enough. So it made me anxiously attached, research it, but it is out there. So When a person is anxiously attached, typically they get clingy really quick. As soon as they meet somebody immediately, it's like, this is the love of my life. I want this one and I want this one forever. And you haven't even gotten a chance to like meet that person. So I struggled with anxious attachment style for a long time. I was freed, I believe in 2020 because I already told y'all that y'all can go watch the other podcast when I dated my neighbor. And after that, I had to like go to therapy and my therapist gave me this book called Attached and I was able to learn about my attachment style. Right. So when you have an anxious attachment style, your dating has to be different because you have to be aware of your patterns. You have to be aware of how you attach and how that can be detrimental to your mental health. It is May is mental health awareness month. So it's all about self-awareness and self-awareness is not for other people. Self-awareness is for you and managing your mental. So I know for me, I feel like I'm having the best dating experience I've had in a while because I'm so aware, I'm so direct, and I'm just, I understand what I got going on and I understand what my boundaries need to be. I get it. I just get me. And I think that's what has made this dating experience better. I have gotten back on one dating app. Um, I had been off of dating apps for over a year. 
Um, this dating app experience, first of all, this is the longest I've ever been on a dating app consistently, usually because when I was using dating apps back in the day, I was using them to scratch an itch. I wasn't being intentional. I was just hopping on them because I needed a quick fix. I felt lonely. So I would just hop on there, see what I could find real quick. If one nothing hidden, I just hopped off. But now I'm intentional. I hope to meet someone who is good quality and who could possibly be a husband because I do know people who have met their husbands on this app. So that's my hope. But I do realize that like I'm so much more patient. I'm so much more loosely um, invested. <laughs> um, and I've noticed that I'm learning to de be detached emotionally going through the dating process, right? And when I tell you it is no small feat, it is not, especially when you have dealt with anxious attachment. <laughs> like it is not easy. So I'm speaking to someone today who has is possibly going through anxious attachment, or maybe you, you are unaware of that, or maybe you're just out here in these dating streets and you're just tired of feeling drained and you want to learn how to emotionally detach detach while dating, then this episode is for you. So I did an episode a long time ago. This was years ago about how I feel like women date wrong. And the reason I say we often date wrong is because men do something really smart that women don't often do. Men start at zero. When men date, when they meet you, they're at zero. Like you are just a person that they just met and then you can build on top of that. But men start at zero. Women, we often start at a hundred. <laughs> okay. And then a guy starts doing stuff and we start taking away points. Right. So that's where we're opposite. And you know, they say men are from Mars, women are from Venus, whatever, because a lot of our thought processes are very different. Right. But I do think it's way smarter to start from zero than it is from 100. And of course, there's always an exception to the rule. I'm not saying everyone, but in most scenarios, men start at zero, women, we start at 100, right? So because we start at 100 and you're all, when we meet you most of the time in our minds, you're already our future. We're already planning out how you're going to look in your tuxedo, how our kids are going to look, everything. So we're already detached. I mean, we're already attached to the possibility of what you got going on. We're already attached to your potential. We're already attached to what, where this could potentially go. Right. So we've already created an illusion in our mind because we're delusional. Right. So I want to teach y'all how to stop doing that because when you do that, it sets you up for a heavier disappointment, right? Because even if you are emotionally detached while dating, if something goes wrong, of course, it's still disappointing regardless, right? So I just want you to not be so disappointed where it's like, it puts you in this really dark space. It puts you in this space where you start questioning yourself. You start to say, oh, I'm never dating again. And all of this, no. It's a part of the game, unfortunately. It's like when you go to an interview, you're not going to get every job that you apply for. You're not even going to get called into interviews. But I feel like in dating, because we get so emotionally invested so quickly, we quit so fast. So I want you to stop doing that. So that's why this episode to me is important, because this is something that I woke up and started to do and realize like, wow, I've grown so much. This is crazy. I've never been this detached in the dating um, streets, but this is cool. So let's get into it. So how do you remain emotionally detached while dating? The number one thing you have to be is self-aware. You have to be self-aware. The reason you need to be self-aware is because you need to understand how much you can handle. How much can you handle? What I mean is what makes you attached to somebody? What, what, do, does a person have to do for you to immediately be like, oh yeah, that's my person. So I know for me talking every day, all day, that makes me attached. Um, spending a lot of time with someone a lot, like that's going to make me attached to you. Um, you just showing up, being there for me, doing acts of service stuff. 
that's going to make me attached to you, right? So if I'm first meeting someone and I don't know them well enough to say that this is going to be my person, I place distance in between us while I'm getting to know you. I know for me, I can't handle seeing you every single day, talking to you every day, all day, and I haven't established what we're doing. So I have to set a boundary. I have to be like, okay, we can talk every day, but we can't talk every day all day. I can't see you every single day. That that's gonna do that's gonna cause me to attach to you. So I know what I can handle. Some people are okay with that. Some people, sex makes you attached. So as soon as you have sex, boom, you're attached to that person, right? So you have to know what triggers your attachment. You have to know what triggers you emotionally in your mind to say that I really like this person. My emotions are out of control. And this is, you know, and the reason you need to know that is because you need to know how to set your boundaries because everybody's boundaries are going to be different. There are some people who can see you every single day. They have sex with you all day, every day. They can be meet your mama, introduce you to their parents, all of that, and still not be attached to you and still not like you like that. But not everybody's like that, right? So you have to understand your boundaries. What makes you emotionally attached? So you have to start there because you need to learn how to set certain boundaries so you can be remain emotionally detached while you're dating, right? The second thing you need to do, do not romanticize these niggas. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I don't like saying niggas because I'm trying, but it's the truth. Stop romanticizing these niggas. You have to stop. You have to stop because here's what we do. We meet a person. They're so cute. I already told you we started at a hundred. They're so cute. They're so adorable. Oh my God. They were so nice to us when we first met them. Oh my God. They opened my door. Oh my God. He would be a great father. Oh my God. We got to stop. We don't know them well enough because let them keep talking. Most of the time they're going to talk them, their ways out of your life. Just stop romanticizing. So what I want you to do is when you meet somebody, you have to get really logical because y'all like my logic and my emotions be having a fight like all the time because emotionally in my brain, but this, this has to do, I have a lot of awareness emotionally in my brain. I'd be like, dang, he ain't text me all day. It's ridiculous. This is stupid. He don't even want me. This is crazy. But then the logic part be like, you ain't text him. You don't even need that because you don't even know where this is going. Why is you tripping? Y'all just mad. Girl, you tripping. Like you have to, <laughs> you have to have a logic battle with your emotions because if you let your emotions in the picture, he going to be every raggedy thing under the sun until he texts you. Then you're going to be like, oh, never mind. So you have to stop romanticizing the situation. Understand where y'all are. I think that is so important. Understanding where you lie with a person. Baby, I love to meet a person where they are. I love to meet them where they are. And I do that because I just, and which goes into my next point. I just don't believe in forcing things. I like to flow, not force. Back in the day, the worst thing a man could ever tell me was let's let it flow. I used to hate that statement with a passion. I used to feel like you're trying to punch me in my face. You're basically telling me that I'm gum on the bottom of your shoe. I'm poo on the bottom of your shoe. You don't want to talk to me. You don't like me and my booty stink. That's basically what you're saying to me when you're telling me you just want to let it flow, right? Now, I still don't necessarily believe in that statement as a overall thing because I do need some kind of intent because I don't date without intention because I'm too old. I don't have time. I know what I want. But at the same time, even if you have an intention, say, for example, for me, I know I want a relationship that leads with marriage. There still has to be a flow developed when you are getting to know somebody, right? I used to be Speedy Gonzalez. I used to want to meet him on Monday. By Friday, I need him to be giving me a girlfriend proposal. By Sunday, I need a promise ring. And by a month from now, I need to be meeting your mother and we need to be setting up when the engagement is going to happen. So that's how I used to be, right? So it's like, now I'm learning about pacing. And what I'm learning is there is a flow. And as you fit into a man's flow, because I just believe, I know for me, and this ain't everybody, but I know for me, I, 
I did a bad job of going where I was wanted back in the day, meaning that I used to date a lot of guys who were not ready for what I was ready for. And I kept trying to force things. So now I only go, I'm appreciated. Like I only operate with people who I know want me. Like, why would I be around someone who don't want me like that? So if you don't want me, then don't talk to me. I mean, Fantasia said it. <laughs> like, Come on. So I followed the man's lead. I let him lead. However, like, if I'm unsure of what he wants, I'm okay with asking. Like, I'm like, hey, what do you want? What is it that you're looking for? Okay, cool. Okay, you're looking for what I'm looking for? And that's another thing. Just because a man is looking for what you're looking for, that doesn't mean he wants it with you. So that's why for me, this is how I date. It's a good idea to follow their lead and flow with their flow. Especially... If you've been in these dating streets, you feel like you've been forced and stuff. You feel like you've been trying to make things happen and you've gone out of your way to do certain things. I'm sorry. This is on my heart. I want to say this and I just, I need y'all to listen. Don't, don't just count me out. I just need y'all to listen to this part. Ladies, we have a tendency to try to manipulate men into doing what we want them to do. We do this because several times we realize that maybe this guy isn't moving how we want him to move. He's not moving fast enough. He's not putting enough, putting in enough effort. So we start manipulating situations. People call it playing games. It's actually manipulation. So you set up strategies to get that person to do what you want them to do. Guess what that does, though? That puts them in extreme control of your emotions. If you have to manipulate a man's mind by playing games for him to be with you, then maybe he don't want to be with you. And, and that's okay. I just heard a tip to a TikTok said, you may not be everybody cup of tea, but you still going to get sick. So... Who cares? You're not going to be for everybody. Everybody's not going to be for you. So I would welcome you to just release, let it go. If that person ain't your person, it's not the end of the world. He ain't the last one. It's going to be more and it's going to be people who appreciate you. You don't have to try that hard when you date. I want y'all to know that. Like you don't have to try that hard. You don't have to do the most. Yes, reciprocate. There's somebody in your life, they're coming in and they send you the good mornings every single day. They setting up dates, they putting in effort, they saying they like you, all of that. Say all of that back if you mean it. I need you to reciprocate, okay? Reciprocation. Because I know a lot of times we get tired and we get jaded. And so when a guy does come in with good intentions, we don't do a lot of recipro reciprocating. I want you to reciprocate when it's, you know, when it happens. But if it's not happening, don't force it. You don't have to try that hard. With the right person, there's going to be a flow. There's going to be a flow and you are going to know. So I want you to stop trying to force puzzle pieces that don't fit because when you do that, you give that person control and guess what? You can't stay emotionally detached while you're dating if you're constantly trying to manipulate and control situations. You can't. Take your hands off. Let it go. Let it go. Flow with it. Let it go. Last thing, you already said this, but you have to keep a healthy distance, okay? You have to keep a healthy distance. What I mean is, I'm sorry, but you cannot think that you're going to give someone all of your time every single day, and then most likely you're probably thinking about giving them your body and think you're going to stay detached. You're not, you're not. Sometimes you got to limit it. And I know that's hard for me because quality time is like my number one love language, but I had to limit it, right? I had to keep a healthy distance. Now, the only time I'm not keeping a healthy distance is once I've gotten to know that person, once I see there's a flow, once I've gauged their character to see they are who they say they are. I'm pacing. I'm slowly moving, right? But I think oftentimes when we when we meet someone who we feel like, oh my God, this is a good person. This is a good catch. We want to jump in head first. No, I need you to lead with your toes. I need you to lead with your toes. Don't lead with your cooter. 
Don't lead with your heart. I need you to lead with your feet. I need you to walk into this thing. Somebody said, I don't ever want to fall in love. I want to walk into love. That's me. I used to want to fall in love because I was a hopeless romance. I don't want to fall into nothing. I want to walk <laughs> into this thing because I want to know what I'm getting myself into, honey. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I just need you to take your time, pace yourself and keep that healthy distance because the more you try to do that. And, and again, I just always like to say, there's always an exception to the rule. You can meet somebody tomorrow who wants to whisk you away and sweep you up off your feet and want to see you every day, all day. And they want to be in love with you because you in love with them and everything can work out great. Perfect. But oftentimes they're not, that's not how it works. So practically, usually there's a flow. And if you know that you get attached easily, keep a healthy distance. I'm not telling you not to reciprocate, but stop yourself from doing certain stuff. I'm going to tell y'all what I used to do. Cause I used to get on my nerves. Oh, I used to get on my nerves. Like I would meet a guy on Monday, his birthday on Wednesday. I got this man balloons, cake, all kinds of stuff. And I just met this man two days ago. Now I'm not saying that getting all that stuff ain't nice. I could, a car would have done. A car would have been good. Okay. I used to be the type that on Monday, if he talk about, you want to come over on two? Sure. Stupid. <laughs> like I'm not doing that no more. But I just think for me, it's, it's just about maintaining my mental health. The mo like that's the number one thing, because I feel like when you are dating at a certain pace and you're moving so fast, you're going to attach to every man that you meet. And if you attach to every single person that you meet, of course, you, of course, you're going to be toe up. Of course, you're going to be broken. Of course, your mental health is going to be out of whack. You attach to everybody and everybody ain't working out. So yeah, you're going crazy over there. So I want you to learn how to basically pace yourself in a healthy way out here in these dating streets. Now, if you already feel like you toe up, you already feel like you are over it. You already feel like you have been needed to detach. Go ahead and join my 21 day man fast that kicks off on Monday. It's all about a reset because we're going to set the foundation. Then we're going to release a lot of that past hurt and that pain. And then we're going to rebuild and we're doing all this. And it's not even about men. Honestly, it's about your mental. It's really about your mental. It's a, I'm just so my heart grieves when I see how many women have opted out of dating and have, and have said in their minds, like, you know what? Men ain't even worth it. You know what? Dating ain't even worth it. You know what? I'm okay with being alone forever. And that breaks my heart because I know a lot of that comes from pain. And a lot of that pain can be healed. A lot of that pain can be overcome. A lot of that fear can be overcome. But it's just about setting that foundation and releasing and understanding the a better strategy of dating. So this stuff does not drain you because it can be draining. So go ahead and click the link below. Sign up. Go ahead and, you know, get it going. I will have an ebook. You can pre-order it right now for $14.99. It will be out on the 26th. You can buy it then. At that point, it'll be $21 for $1 a day. You can keep the dusties away, okay? That's, you know, a part of this reset is understanding who was for you and who was not, amen? Okay, so y'all, until next time, like, share, comment. Of course, leave me five stars. If you ain't gonna leave five stars, don't leave none at all because ain't nobody got time for y'all to be messing up my score, okay? All right, bye.